starts in Richmond, but doesn't end there. And the, and the cause was to raise money to build wells in Africa. Motivation is a powerful thing, and it's coming up a lot on this show. Up next, a man who has been dubbed the Frogman by reporter Peter Kim makes him kind of sound like a superhero, right? Well, if you watch and see, you just might think he is, because he makes a great role model for kids. He got him. He's an accomplished architect, but frogs are David Wong's true passion. They're wonderful pets. You know, they don't complain. You don't need much attention. They're like cats. You don't have to walk them, They're like dogs. And they're easy to, to look after. You know, you look at them, they're very friendly. He has over 100 and collects and breeds them in an effort to boost their waning numbers. So I've been doing that on and off for about 10, more than 10 years, but seriously in the last five years. And I find it's a losing battle. It's an absolute losing battle because the populations are not sustainable. This little fella here is about six months old. Over the last 10 years, almost a, I think a quarter of them have been uh, close to extinction. I think over 100 species in the last five years have gone extinct. For David, frogs are more than just pets. I grew up in Strathcona and I hate to say this, but a lot of my friends end up going, some end up in gangs and some are, uh, are dead, you know, for whatever reasons. And you know, at the time there was no internet to keep everyone at home. So a lot of younger kids would, would go catch frogs at the time, myself included. Frogs have always been one of these animals that have always kept me out of trouble growing up in a very um, tough neighborhood, I guess, and as, as a kid. As an adult, he returned to those very same ponds that were his refuge as a child. I was hoping to go back and show my young children at the time, they were very young, the locations where the frogs used to be. And as I went back to my childhood uh, frog ponds and frog swamps out in Strathcona, they were all gone. They were all filled up parking lots. So that really bothered me. A Dr. Kerry Krieger, he's been trying to get the word out about saving amphibians around the world. I wrote to him says, you know, I'd be interested in supporting your efforts. And it also inspired him to act. He's organized numerous public events and lobbied government for change. Uh, throughout the world, it, it made uh, headline stories in various newspapers around the world, uh, you know, on the net, uh, declaring that Vancouver was Canada's first city that, the, that proclaimed Save the Frogs Day. An important milestone because... Over 10% of the medications for human beings have come from frogs, amphibian research. Painkillers, a lot of painkillers come from frogs. There's a uh, HIV um, uh, derivative that comes from a peptide from a frog that actually has been found to attack the HIV virus. It may have started as a very personal fight, but it's one that everyone has a stake in. In Vancouver, I'm Peter Kim for The Express. A little froggy fact for you, the world's largest frog is the Goliath frog in West Africa. It can grow up to 15 inches and weighs up to 7 pounds. Of course, tell that to my dad who swears that we have giant frogs living on Langford Lake. I don't know, sounds fishy, doesn't it? And I think that's a good thing. It'll stop me from making some inappropriate frog legs comments because we have a food focus on today's Express. Looks yummy.